Hey everyone, in my last video I showed you how to make the terminal a bit more exciting with REST term and Starship. Some of you have asked for a deeper dive into my Starship config, so that's what we're gonna do today. If you haven't seen the last video, don't worry. Starship is an amazing tool that helps you customize your terminal prompt. Basically, it turns a basic prompt like this, which doesn't tell you much, into something like this. A colorful prompt that shows you useful information like your current directory, git branch and much more. By the end of this video, you'll not only know my config, but my goal is that you understand how to build your own config from scratch that suits your specific needs. What makes Starship different from other shell prompts is that it's pretty lightweight. OmazZSH, for example, which is another super popular framework, offers more of a batteries included experience, packed with a lot of features out of the box. Starship, on the other hand, is more minimalist. You start with a blank slate and only add what you need. Personally, I prefer this approach because I feel that it keeps my config clean and easy to manage, but that's just my personal preference. Now I want to emphasize that there's no one right way to set up your terminal. There are pros and cons to each approach and the best configuration is the one that works for you. So feel free to take what you like and leave the rest. The beauty of Starship is that it can be as complex or as simple as you like. So grab a tea or coffee and let's dive into it. Alright, we are now in my terminal. As you can see the prompt looks pretty basic so let's change that. First we want to make sure that you have homebrew installed by typing brew version. And we want to make sure that ZSH is your shell with echo. $0. Another prerequisite that I should mention is that you have a nerd font installed and enabled in your terminal settings. If you haven't, go back to the previous video where I explain exactly how to do that for Western. Now let's install Starship with brew install Starship. To load Starship, whenever we start a new terminal section, we need to add a few lines to our zshrc file. So I open the file in NeoVim, nvim, zshrc. You can open it in VS Code as well by typing code.zshrc. And now I want to add the following lines. This first line changes where Starship looks for the config file. By default, it looks directly in the .config directory. But inside of .config, I like to have one subdirectory per tool that I'm configuring. So I like to have my starship.toml file in .config slash starship. And the second line actually initializes Starship. Let's save and quit. Now let's source this file. And we see that Starship got initialized. You can see this because the prompt has changed. The prompt consists of two lines. The first line shows that we are currently in the home directory and the second line is where we type the input. Let's clear that up. Now let's create the config directory with makedir-p.config starship and now create the actual config file inside of that directory. Again, open it up with your favorite text editor. In my case, it's NeoVim. Now how this works is that you create a variable called format, which is a string, and in that string you include the different Starship modules which you would like to see in your terminal prompt. Let's have a look at a very simple example. Now I created the format string and I included the directory module, the git branch module and the character module. Let me save this and open up another tmux pane down below so that we can see exactly how this looks like. If in the tmux pane down below we go into some project, which is a git repository, we can see how the prompt looks like right now. So as expected, we first see the current directory, the branch that we're in, and then character, which is this arrow symbol that signals that the input starts from here. Just for illustrative purposes, let's actually go ahead and reverse the order of directory and git branch and see what happens. So now if I save this, you can see that now we first see the git branch and then the directory. Of course, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but you get the idea of how this works. Now let's add some more reasonable modules here. I like to have the directory first, followed by the git branch. Then I like to see the git status. The git status module shows the current state of the repo in your current directory. If we save this, now you can see next to the branch that we have an untracked file represented by the question mark and one staged file as shown by the plus icon. Next I will add a fill. This pushes everything that comes after it to the right side of the prompt. I like to see the current language of the repository on the right side of the prompt, so I can add Lua, Python, Node.js. I also like to see the AWS profile, a Docker context. This will get triggered whenever there's a Docker file in the current directory, jobs to see if there are any background jobs running, the command duration, and lastly, I like to add a line break to move the input on a separate line. Now let's save this and see what has changed. Okay, now we have the input on a separate line. We see these dots, which is the fill. And if I activate a Python version, then we can see it on the right hand side. This looks okay, but I think we can do a lot better. If we just include the modules into our format string as we did now, Starship will apply the default configuration for each of these modules. But we can also further customize each of them. 
For example, if you don't like that the fill module uses dots instead of spaces to separate the left from the right side, we can go back to the Starship config file and add a header for the fill module and then change the variable symbol to space. And now we see spaces instead of dots. If you're not sure what the options are, we can head over to Starship's documentation. And they have a module for pretty much all of the most common languages and tools. Let's have a look at Python, for example, which is a language that I personally work in a lot. There's an explanation of what exactly this module does. And here you can see all the different options that are available with the Python module. So let me show you what I've got for Python. Let's head back into the terminal and add the Python header. All right, now let's go through it step by step. Most modules have this format variable, which determines what the module will display in the prompt. The first part, which is enclosed in the square braces, is called a format string. Here we can add texts and variables. Notice that each of the components inside the format string are variables. For example, symbol in the format string refers to the symbol we put here. And pyenv prefix refers to the pyenv prefix we see here. The second part, enclosed in parentheses, is called a style string. And as the name suggests, it styles the format string. And it refers to the style variable you can see here. In this case, I simply set the color to teal. Inside of the style string, we can also control the foreground and background separately. For example, I could set the foreground to white and the background to, let's say, blue. Now inside the format string, we can also have parentheses. In this case, they represent a conditional format string. For example, version here is only displayed if it's not empty. If version is missing, nothing will be displayed. Now let's save this and take a look at what has changed. And as expected, we see the Python version in white on a blue background with a different Python logo and we got rid of the via prefix. Now let's change the style back to teal and add another module. Let's say I want to see my currently activated AWS profile. So I head over to the Starship documentation and I check if they have an AWS module. And it turns out that they do. And the module's description says that if we have the AWS credentials properly configured on the machine and we export an AWS profile environment variable, then it will display the current AWS profile. Let's scroll down to see what the options are. And again, they have the format option. This one comes with this on prefix, which I probably want to get rid of. It has the symbol, which I also want to change. We have again a style, and then we have some AWS specific options. Let me show you how I set this up in my config. All right, let's scroll down a bit and add the AWS header. I found this really nice Amazon symbol, which I want to use. I like the font color to be yellow. By default, it was bold yellow, but I prefer to give it less font weight. And again, we have the format option, which I pretty much copied from the documentation, but I got rid of the on prefix. Let's save this and see what has changed. So we don't see an AWS profile yet, and this is because we haven't exported the AWS profile environment variable. But once we do that, we can see that now Starship will display the AWS profile. You might have noticed that the Python version got displayed in white instead of teal as we defined it. This is because teal is not defined in the current color palette. For my configuration, I defined a custom color palette based on the Nord color theme, which I really like. You can define a custom color palette by including the palette's header. And then you can give it a name after the dot. Each one of these variables under the header represents one color. If a name of a color here coincides with the name of a color used in a Starship module, it will get overwritten with your color. But as we have seen, this is not the case with teal, so in this case we need to explicitly refer to it. But we already did this in the style string of Python. In order to apply the custom color palette, we need to add one more thing, which is this setting right here. Color palette equals naught. Let's save it and again check what has changed. And now the Python version is shown in teal. I would also like to have the directory in a darker blue color. So I go back to the configuration file and I add the directory config where I specify that I would like to have the dark blue color from our palette in bold. I've also added this truncation logic, which will display the truncation symbol whenever the directory gets too long. Let's see this in action. So now we see the directory in dark blue. And if I go a couple of directories deep, you can see that at the beginning of the prompt, the directory got truncated with the truncation symbol that we configured. I also add some directory substitutions. These will display the following icons whenever I'm in one of these directories instead of the directory itself. Next, let's fine tune the git branch. 
I wanted to have the color in green and I prefer this symbol. For the format string, I wanted to control the colors of the on prefix and the symbol and the branch separately. So what I did was I added the on prefix in a format string and styled it with the color white and then added the symbol and the branch in another format string and styled it with the style variable from this module. I also want to make some small adjustments to the git status module. Let me add my options here. I wanted to keep it in the same color as the git branch. I copied the format option from the documentation but I got rid of the brackets. So let's save again and see how it looks. Much better in my opinion. Let's also add the command duration and the background jobs. Now if I go to the pane below and I execute a command which takes some time so let's just open regular vim and I stay here for some time and then I exit out. You can see that the duration of the command is being displayed on the right side. Now let's also create a background job. So I go into vim and I put it in the background with command z. And now you can see a red gear icon which shows that there's still a task running in the background. Finally I want to add Node.js and Lua to the config. For these languages I don't want to change too much. The only thing I really want to change are the symbol because I prefer to have the actual symbol of the language rather than the default symbols provided by Starship. And that's pretty much it. As you can see Starship is incredibly flexible and straightforward to use. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to see a deep dive on other parts of my config please let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.